this video we're discussing the coefficient of determination and we're going to look at the formula and the description and then aspects of the formula to help explain the role of r squared or the coefficient of determination. Let's start with the definition here which I've written up on the board. It says the percent of sample variation in y, remember y is your response variable, that can be explained by using x to predict y in our linear model, right? So the percent of sample variation in the response variable that can be explained by x, right, in the model. Okay, so the formula here is basically making a ratio of two quantities. It has the sum of squares for y minus the sum of squares for error divided by the sum of squares for y. So essentially there's a simple ratio here. To understand what the ratio is doing, we have to look at this and make some interpretation. So what is SSYY? Well, remember, that's like the top part of the variation formula, right, for variance, sorry, the top part of the variance formula for y. It essentially takes the individual y values, subtracts off their sample mean, and then squares those, and then adds them all up, right? So for every individual value y, you take a difference of that and its sample mean, you square all those results, add them all up, and this gives you basically a measure of the variation of y about its mean. Now, for the sum of square for error, it's a little bit different, right? It's the individual y values, once again, minus the predicted y value when using x as a predictor to predict y, right? So in your model, for every individual observed y value, you can plug in an x value into your equation, get a predicted y value, you subtract those two, that gives you your error, you square it, you add it up, that's the sum of squares for error. All right, <clears throat> now what happens though if x has no role in predicting y? We spoke about this earlier, and that is that when x has no role in predicting y, it means that the model here breaks down to be x bar. It essentially means that the best guess for the best predictor then becomes the sample mean, right? So if x has no role, that means the slope is essentially zero, right? So x basically drops out of the model, and you essentially just get y bar here. If that's the case, it means what? It means that these two equations would become identical. So when x has absolutely no role in predicting y, this term becomes y bar, making these two terms equivalent. So let's imagine that scenario. x has no role, and these two are the same. It means you get a zero on top. It means the ratio becomes zero. It means r squared becomes zero. You'd be saying that 0% of the sample variation in y can be explained by x. Now, of course, though, of course, if x does have a role in predicting y, if the prediction that you get, this y i hat, if that quantity is actually useful, or there is a, a, a fair amount of information in x that helps explain y, then these quantities will be different. And essentially, if this is a very good model, this means these predicted values will be very close to the observed values, and that means that this overall quantity would be quite small. And if it's quite small, if this is almost zero, let's say in the hypothetical scenario where it would be zero, if it was zero, then you'd have this over this, and the ratio would be one, right? So essentially we have a possible range of values from zero to one, and we're essentially saying as you get closer to one, it means the model has done a very good job, because remember, this predicted value is very close to the observed value, this overall quantity is small, right? So if these are consistently close to their observations, then the error is very small. That means there's very little error terms. The error terms are tiny. If those error terms are tiny, this overall quantity is tiny. That means the difference between this and this is going to be virtually close to SSYY divided by SSYY, and you will end up with a ratio that's close to one. And that would mean that there's a very large percent of information um, that's, or variation, sorry, that can be explained by x in the model. So that's essentially the idea. This measures that relationship. If the predicted values are very close to the observed values, it means the model is very good and x is a very good predictor of y and that will be reflected in r squared. If it's a very poor predictor, if these numbers are very far, far apart, right, that means the error term would be large. That means you're going to have a very small ratio when you're done. So that's essentially the rule of r squared. Zero means that none of the sample variation in y can be explained by using x to predict y. Um, if the number is close to one, it means lots and lots of the sample variation in y can be explained by x. And that's it.